compliments to all you Kirin. Hover your way into the stinky dragon and quaff our latest coffee. Force to be reckoned with. It's a mixture of legendary berries, sacred fire sugar cubes, cavalry cold brew, half and hoof topped with crop whipped cream and sprigs of smite. One swig of this will will have you chomping at the bit of the beyond. Previously, our adventurers were bombarded with the reality that blood is thicker than water and none more than the horrendous Hemogoblin. However, a harrowing row with our heroes freed a winded Weezer trapped inside the gory gobby. To top it off, Chip found a fresh fanny pack note from his lost lover, Carol. Bring over a brew and buckle up for this bedtime tale. You're showing your American by pronouncing it row. It's a row. Row? Oh. Yeah. Row. What's a row? It's what it's what them British people call a fight. A row. Oh. They say lots of words wrong. I'm not going to listen to them. Uh, hello, everyone. <laughs> uh, my name is Gustavo Sorolla. I'm your dungeon master. They need to learn how to speak English in England. I'm your dungeon master of our putrid party. I'm going to hit our four players with an arrow. Pew, no! pew, pew. This week's role-playing warm-up question is, if funds were low or your currency was no good somewhere... What's a job or task your character could slash would do for some coin? I will start. Well, hello, I'm Barbara Dunkelman, and I play Elga Von Brass, the half-elf vampire barbarian. And I think if Elga was looking for a, a little side job or extra coin here and there, she would join the local mover company because um, she could do that all by herself. Maybe not <laughs> drive the truck, but she could lift anything and everything. Back it up, boys. <laughs> That's true. Elga is strong. Yeah. But she can't drive. <laughs> hey there, it's me, Chip Painey. Blur blurble Gurble, everyone. Blurble, blurble Gurble. Gurble. Oh, happy Blurble Gurble to you. Uh, you know, if the, if the money got a little low, I easy one is, uh, you know, murder for hire. But, you know, outside of that, I, I always liked, uh, you know, teaching the youths how to play the hacky. Uh, you know, <laughs> in, uh, sacker, football. I thought you meant hacky sack. <laughs> Table so did I. The all, all the sports you know i i i got uh, i've been told i've got big uh camp counselor energy and yeah, i'd like to tap into that there why don't you just be a camp counselor then <laughs> well you know i can't murder children you know and that's what i'm good at what what i like murder <laughs> murder and teaching children sports <laughs> yeah they go hand in hand that's yeah. right yeah i'm chris maris and i play barney farney the human cleric and i think I like to carve little trinkets out of wood. I could sell those to any little kids uh, and you know, adults if they like them. And Can I have one of your little wooden figures, Barney? Oh, of course. Well, make sure it's make... not pointed on the end. Oh, yeah. Make sure it's not in any cross form. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then um, I also I like walking around. So maybe I could give tours <laughs> of around. Hey, make money w uh, doing what you love, right? That's what they say. <laughs> Is there anything Barney would want to give a tour of specifically or just like any tour in general? Any tour. Yeah, just walk around and say, that, that that's a house and that's a bush. And that's, you know, just I remember back in this place used to have a, a different sized cart. And now it's a bigger cart. Wow. That's stuff like that. Where do we line up? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like the idea that Barney doesn't charge for it. It's just like his morning walk that people happen to follow yeah. him on. <laughs> My name is John Reisinger, and I play Mati Confucius, the Eric Cochrane Ghost Monk. And as I was in my bakery, obviously, that is why we found me in this story. Uh, if I wasn't working at a bake bakery, I would love to be a, uh, what's, what you call a, a uh, parfumous, um, a perfumer. Oh. I've always loved the, uh, the art of pressing and, and distilling the essence of scents from uh, uh, unique objects. The, the irony of John giving this answer to, I love it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's always seemed like such a, uh, a, a lovely calling. I just wear the old Irish Springs there. Been doing it for years. Hasn't changed a bit. Mm. <laughs> Yummy outdoor smells. Chip strikes me as a coast kind of guy, not necessarily an Irish Spring kind of guy. I don't know if I'm familiar with coast. Is it too old? Chip, too old Chip guy? Chip strikes me as an axe yeah, body yeah. spray. Axe oh, body spray. That's, that's Barney's bag. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that should be Elga's bag. Oh, yeah, there you go. Oh, I get it. 
Thank you. I appreciate the acknowledgement. <laughs> the hemoglobin roars in agony. <laughs> Fortune favors even the foolish now and then. But mark my words. Next time, I'm going for the jugular. And with a splash, the Gila Goblin vanishes into the waterfall, and just like that, every wellspring turns back to fresh water. I want to catch whatever body was inside it. Nothing falls out of it. However, after a second, you hear hacking and wheezing, and someone emerges from behind the waterfall. Uh, you all recognize him. It's Weezer. Yeah, Chief Inspector Weezer? Chief, Chief Inspector, Inspector Weezer. Weezer. <laughs> I, I, I pat the Chief Inspector on the back to help him get the butt out. Thank you. Uh, that was a night nice trick, by the way. Thank you, Skull Hellish Rebuke. That was my first time using it. <laughs> Chief Inspector Weezer, what were you doing inside that hemoglobin? He seems to be struggling for his breath. He's like retching up, coughing up blood. Oh, and he's no. like pointing out, giving like a weight he's sign. He's turning one of the blood methods. <laughs> you all look down and notice your clothes are no longer drenched in blood, but damp with water. Oh. oh. No. <laughs> we were baptized. What is this? <laughs> As you're wringing out your vestments and drying off, Chip, you notice your fanny pack zip zipper is open. <gasps> what the heck? You check inside to make sure nothing has fallen out, but the opposite is true. You find a note. Oh? On the outside is familiar floral penmanship that reads to Chip from Carol. <gasps> My wife! Yes! I want to read it. Well, the note's written in Thieves' Cant, which I think we have established Chip does read. We uh, that's You were able to read a map before. And Thieves I guess Cant. That's right. Carol could write in Thieves' Cant, which is... That's terrible. right. Even more impressive. She's so talented, that Carol, she could write and speak in all the pretty flowery languages you can imagine. <laughs> Thieves' Cant is a pretty floral language. Oh, yeah, it sounds like, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Borble That's gurble. canon now. <laughs> gurble, gurble, so what's the letter say? The note reads, to Chip from Carol. I want to read it. Give it to me. Send it to me. <laughs> okay, one second. I'll slack it. Is he reading it out loud to all of us or just to himself? No, that's up to him. What do you have there, Chippa boy? I can tell by the smell it's from my beautiful wife, Carol, who is hopefully not dead. Maybe not telling it from the fact that it says to Chip from Carol that you oh, can tell that it too, from Carol. That too. <laughs> all right, it says, <laughs> I'm going to try to get through this. To Chip from Carol. Address is only the beginning. He has the Book of Daybreak. Go to Lehim's Library. Find the Book of Evenfall. My talons lie elsewhere. Our love cannot be sheathed. P.S. A gift lies in the stars. As you're reading the note out to everyone, the mummy chimes in and says, Of course. I can't believe I didn't see it before with all these plagues. Hadim must have the Book of Daybreak. But what's his endgame? And why is my wife involved? What the heck? What a beautiful note. <laughs> so sweet. Was Carol always involved in all of this? Oh, do you have like a short five to ten hours to talk about my beautiful wife? I'll tell you everything about her. So, I sure do. Okay, well, basically to keep things short. Uh, no, I want the full five hours. Okay, all right. It all began on a <laughs> stormy night. I was on assignment, targeting in a ne'er-do-well. And as I approached the target, someone else was there too. Uh, we got into a rough and tumble exchanging of the fisticuffs and I, I removed her hood and she removed mine from my shooty. It's a shirt, I meet with a hoodie. Uh, <laughs> shooty wear it, shooty not. Anywho, it was a beautiful woman, and we had kind of this, uh, you know, back and forth for a while where I'd take one of her e targets and she'd take one of mine, and that's kind of our, you know, love language, just stealing each other's uh, murders. And uh, eventually we decided, what the heck, let's go get a coffee that there at the Tim Hortons and some donuts, and her name was Carol. We fell in love and we decided to leave our life of assassination behind us and start anew. And then she bought me a bird named Skipper, and he bites me a lot. <laughs> and the rest is history. <laughs> Thank wow, you. Thank those you. five hours flew by. I <laughs> <laughs> hey, everyone, new chip lore just dropped. Did you okay? yeah. <laughs> Hot chip lore. I came up with all that just now, but that sounds like right to me. I hope I didn't mess up my You can go and ahead and update Blaine. his Wikipedia page. Blaine's going to remember all of that, and he That's will right. totally abide by it. Well, especially if it's on the Wikipedia page, then he'll definitely remember it. 
Also, Chris requested that I share the letter with you, so I sent it to you guys over Slack in case you wanted to read it. Oh, thank you. You, the note takers of the group. So it sounds like we need to go to Leim's uh, library. That is what the note says. So does anyone know where to find this? Mommy? Why wouldn't your lovely wife, Carol, stop and say hi? There's got to be something amiss, Barney. You know, that she doesn't normally act like this. She's fallen back to her old assassin ways. So some troubles are brewing, and I need to help her. <laughs> What in the blazes are you all talking about? Where are we? Who is Hadi? And where is the alchemist? Oh, and it's an absolute pleasure to see you once again, Pharaoh Rajod. Weezer bows low and the mummy nods approvingly at the plump man. Chief Inspector, I know this must all be confusing, but suffice to say we are all working together to get to the bottom of this conspiracy. I'm afraid someone has taken control of the throne and means to unleash a scourge upon the land. Perhaps he has your friend, the alchemist. Regardless, we will no doubt need reinforcements. Perhaps you can go back into town and make contact with your coughs. Bring as many as you can. Yes, madam, right away. Weezer turns to you. And as for you four, more speed to you all. Gives you all a very curt salute and then uh, runs off. So we're friends with Weezer? He's not chasing us no more? No, you all kind of had uh, a reconciliation before you got on the train back in Masketon. Best of luck, Chief Inspector Weezer. If you want, I mean, you all are at, you know, this wellspring of wellness. It's kind of a spa. You're free to take a short rest if you want. Oh, yeah. Uh, would love to. I'll take a long rest if you want. <laughs> Shall we? Let's take a nap. Is there reasons why we can't take a long rest, is my question. I guess if you wanted to speed along to try to stop Hadi and try to get things resolved as quickly as possible. Taking a short rest, then, to expeditiously deal with these plagues? Yes. Okay. I don't feel too good. Yeah, I'm a lot of hit die, but that's well, okay. Well, if you're out of hit die, you can immerse yourself in the fresh wellsprings if you want and rejuvenate yourself that way. Ooh. Take a little dip, Barney. Here we go. I will dunk you in. I'll hold you because we don't have your water wings with you today. <laughs> Could Elga do the thing where she holds Barney under the armpits and, like, <laughs> slushes him around <laughs> in the water? <laughs> if you take a dip in the wellspring to uh, rejuvenate yourself, you can recover two hit die plus your constitution uh, modifier of healing. Ooh, now we're talking. Oh. Mati takes a really lovely dive up into the air and, like, does some twirls and flips and then f- jumps into the water and makes, like, no splash whatsoever. Should I pull the sign that says 10? It's a bird bath now. I'm back to full glass. Do I get my, that there, hellish rebuke? Yeah, to bar, you cast it once per long rest. Oh, once per long, long rest, son of a gun. That hellish rebuke really did come in handy. Glad I stored it up for a rainy day. It was used at the perfect time, it seemed like. Yeah. It feels good on my bones. Barney, put your bones back in. You're not supposed <laughs> to leave them out. <laughs> At your that's age, that's marriage. terrible. All right, we're all rested, right? Everyone's good? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yes. Okay. And it does sound like from these notes that Hadi, it's the headdress was only the beginning, so maybe they plan to steal more things and have more control. So oh, we no. should definitely the, get going. The whole outfit. <laughs> <laughs> the shoes are next. <laughs> Chip is anxious. He wants to find his wife. Let's get moving. Chop, chop. Here we go, team. Come on. Let's go. I'm jogging in place. Hey, hey, oh, come on. Hey. I hold everybody back to see if he knows where he's going. I just, I'm just running in circles until I find a direction. <laughs> mommy, mommy, point me in the right direction. I'm ready to go. I'm a cannonball firing. Yo, here we go. I thought you were saying mommy. Mommy. All right. <laughs> Well, you guys need to travel through the crowded city, but you need to do it, you know, discreetly. So uh, we're going to do a group deception check to see if you all are able to successfully discreetly navigate the city. So everyone roll a deception check. I rolled a one. That's a five. I rolled a six. (laughs) Fifteen. Barney, it's up to you. This is going to determine it. Fourteen. Don't you have disadvantage on deception checks? Or is that a different one? No, no, only uh, um, uh, stealth. 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 Okay. All right, so yeah, you all are able to navigate the city. And, really? <laughs> yeah, discreetly. Anytime you are accosted with a local, you're able to make a fib and quickly get out of the way so that they don't investigate and they don't see through your disguises. Yeah, and we have those tattoos and everything too, so. Oh, Correct. yeah. Fit right in. 
Chip keeps a close eye out for Carol. She snuck up on me once. She's playing hard to get, but I'm going to find her. I was going to say, for clarification, that person that bumped me in the, in the crowd, that was, was that like a messenger or was that Carol? Like, was that what? I don't know. I didn't get a good look at them. Do you? You're the, you're. Oh. He doesn't just tell us stuff. You know that at this point. We've been playing this for a while. He's God. He knows all. He, he sees does. all. Micah knows all. I just read. Yeah. <laughs> You make your way back out of the cavern into the streets of Kaharian and instantly feel the afternoon sun beat down on your necks. You notice more and more locals coming out from hiding now that the blood has turned back to water. You cross the main canal to the southeast and immediately spot a two-story building towering above the surrounding homes. As you get closer, you find a side that reads Lahim's Library. The mummy leads you all through the entrance made of revolving glass panels. Everyone go ahead and roll a perception check. Got it. Ooh. Six. Eight. 21. 14. Ship and Elga, you enter a tiled lobby and breathe in the musty smell of old tomes and dusty. <laughs> a bug flies into your open mouth and you start choking. Both of you. <laughs> oh, no. Do we both choke on the same bug? I don't know. I think I already <laughs> came into my mouth and I coughed it out. <laughs> it went into your mouth. Gross. <laughs> Barney, you find the creaking of aged shelves and trickling of water soothing as you look around the spacious layout of the library. Mm -hmm. To the east are lofty stacks that reach the next floor. To the west are a few desks near a dribbling fountain and a spiral staircase. Matid, you happen to peer further down the hall, and to the northeast you see a massive brass globe surrounded by shelves of parchment. To the northwest you spot a corner of cubbies stocked with scrolls. And you hear something besides creaking shelves and trickling water. It sounds like a mixture of chirping and buzzing. Mm. So we came in from the south? Correct. Okay. The birds and the bees, I see. Be vigilant, my friends. We don't know what perils await us amongst these tomes. We would do well to find the Book of Evenfall and get out. Do you know what section that's in? Who's the author? How do they arrange this place? Is it by alphabetical order of title or is there an ISBN number? The Book of Evenfall would most likely be in the nonfiction section. Oh. Are your libraries regularly dangerous? No, but on the same token, our city is not normally dangerous either. Oh, okay. Is this one of those libraries that's got like the ladders that go on the rails and you get to zoom around like your bell from Princess the Beauty and the Beast? <laughs> <laughs> I love that movie, Princess Beauty and the Beast. Beast. <laughs> but that one, but you've read it twice. Well, it's my favorite. <laughs> so there is a spiral staircase on the western wall that wraps around a tree that goes up to the next floor. But then to the east, by those stacks I mentioned, those stacks do rise up to the next floor. So yeah, there would be a, a ladder there that moves around to allow you to access the books on the higher shelves. I jump on that. Okay, well, he does that. I'm just gonna, it, fine, you can do that. I'm sauntering over to the desk, taking it slow. Okay, you're sauntering over to like the study area where uh, those like, those cubbies and those desks were. Oh, so it's like desks as in multiple. It's not like a librarian's desk. Yeah, to the west is like a few desks near that fountain. And that might be what you were talking about. It's not, it's not like a central desk, it's more like where people would take books to read them or, or study. Yeah, I'll head over there anyways. Okay, so Chip goes over to the ladder where the stacks are, which is on the east wall. Matid heads over to the west where the cubbies are, like the desk, the little uh, study area. What do Barney and Elga do? Barney will go with Chip. <laughs> okay. What did you say was to the east again when you were describing the room? It's the stairs and uh, like northeast there's the, this glow. Yes. So to the east is where the stacks are. That's where Chip and Barney went. Okay. Where's the stairs then? The stairs, stairs are, are to, to on the west. west side, yeah. On the side I'm going to where the desks are as well? Correct. The stairs are like north of those desks. Okay, thank you. Then yeah, there's like a big globe on the northeast corner. I'll go look at the globe. But not before uh, sticking my foot out right by the ladder where Chip is swinging on it, so I trip him. I counter that trip with my athleticism. I do a backflip, do a forward flip. Roll off, roll off. You're gonna try to knock Chip off of the ladder? Mm-hmm. All right, I guess you just have to stick your foot out for that. Just make a dexterity check just to get your foot in the way. 17. Oh, yeah, you're able to, to plant your foot down there. Chip, I guess you also make a... You may, I'll let you, I'll give you the choice, a dexterity or a strength check to either hold your balance or hold on firmly to the ladder and keep from falling. Check, not saving throw? Check. 
Dexterity or strength. They are both the same. We're going to go with dexterity. Get me now. 12. <laughs> yeah, that's good enough. Elga sticks her foot out and stops the ladder as you're rolling around. It gives you quite a jolt. You come to a sudden stop, but you're able to keep your feet under you, Chip, uh, and keep from tumbling down. I, I do slide down, and I want to address the group before we all disperse, and I say, guys, I don't mean to be rude, but we are in a library, so from henceforth until we leave the library, I think we should be whispering just to be kind to the other people that are here. I agree. That sounds like a good plan. Oh, yeah. No. Uh, yeah, yeah, you got to lower the voice, okay? Mateen, does uh, that sound kosher to you? Uh, that, that is fine with me. I can, oh. I can abide by these rules. Good, good, good. All right. And break. And then I, I silently clap. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I'm going over to the desks with the fountain. Barney's going with Chip, which I don't know what Chip's uh, goal is now that he's been knocked these on yeah. the stacks, and you're going to the globe. Uh -huh. So what do we see? Just to clarify, I may have substituted one word for another one. The desks that you're going to are like kind of in the southwest corner, Matid. I think I may have called them cubbies one time. There are cubbies with scrolls up in the northwest corner. Where you said you're going to the desks, that's the southwest corner. So I just want to make sure that Thank you. the layout is uh, is clarified for everyone. So then somewhere between the desks and those scrolls is where the stairs are. Correct, exactly. Thank you. Along the west wall. The west wing. <laughs> Who wants to uh, go through their section first? I'll go. All right, Elga walks up to the uh, northeast. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Elga! There you go. <laughs> and you see uh, here what attracted your attention, obviously. There's a large globe-like sphere of intersecting brass rings. Oh. So it's not like a, like a world globe. No, some sort of art. Elga, make an intelligence check. Oh, dear. What's that on our barbarian? So good, I can't even find it. So I, <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a great start. I bet you this might be the first time a barbarian's ever had to roll oh. this. Oh, good roll, Barb. Good, bar good roll. Good roll. I roll. I rolled a one, and then I have a negative one, so I rolled zero. So you're not sure what this is. This must be some kind of big sphere for use in a sport or a game of some kind. Oh. Okay. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> How big is it? Did you give a dimension? I did not, but it's large. It's really big. Okay. It's probably, if I had to guess, let's say it's 20 foot diameter. Whoa, big, so, big thing. Yeah, massive with huge brass rings uh, <laughs> circling around it. And Elga thinks it's a sports equipment piece. Yeah. <laughs> oh, maybe these are slides. I didn't realize that libraries had water parks in them. <laughs> <laughs> Could I at least like observe how they look like how they're intertwined like are they just like ring 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 are they kind of like old AT&T logo or are they going around in different ways like yeah. maybe like a solar system and it's like the paths of the planets and the moons yeah something like that like could I at least like visually look at them to yeah it seems like they all go in different directions not AT&T logo they're kind of mishmash all over the place okay and it's it's all like brass you said or gold yeah, giant brass rings that all intersect. Is there any, like, plaque or, like, text information near this thing? No, there is not. However, kind of behind it, there are some shelves that appear to contain some kinds of charts. It's like papers. Can I go look at them? Yeah. There's, like, shelves of various charts and maps, and a lot of them appear to be missing or torn to shreds. Uh-oh. Make an investigation check, Elga. Another strong suit. Oh, I have advantage on this because... You have, like, something of minute seeing, don't you? Yeah, I have it's the... because of her tiny eyes. That's just like, what is that from? Eyes of minute seeing. It's the cri crystal lenses. Oh, bad eyes. It's the item thing. First one is a four. The next one's a 16. Yay. Oh, Ooh. that's much better. You find a few things here amongst the charts and maps. You find like some insect wings and some dust. Maybe it's like one of the insects that you inhaled earlier. You find a sky chart labeled, oh God, I have to read French. Uh, Tempel Cache de Moine Ecclesiastro. It's difficult to decipher, but maybe, you know, someone with a higher intelligence score might be able to uh, <laughs> take some time and uh, figure it out. Or maybe someone who speaks French in the group. Mm. Who does that? <laughs> <laughs> You also find a sky chart labeled Gold of Underglobula. The upper half of it is ripped off. Gold of Underglobula. 
Yeah. Could I take the piece that remains? Yeah, the bottom half of the chart. Okay, Elgo goes to rip it off the wall. Gently. <laughs> uh, this one's not on the wall. It's like in a in a shelf, so you can just okay. grab it. Yeah. Okay. So what should I put in my inventory? Just like piece of chart? Yeah, it's right. Gold of under Galobula. It's spelled just like how it sounds. I figured. <laughs> We're going to have our own, like, language by the end of this campaign. Like, blurble, blurble, blurble. Blurble. You're <laughs> Give me the gold of Globula. So many words. Globula. Yeah. It's like Dracula, but like a glob. I look around, see if there's anything else worth noting. That's about all that catches your attention here. Okay. I head back to the center of the room. Okay. Who wants to go next? I think Matid had also expressed interest. You want to go next, Matid? Yeah, let's do it. You know, this is all happening simultaneously while Elga's up there staring at the sports equipment. You walk over and there's a handful of ironwood desks with parchment, pens, and books. And there's a bubbling fountain of fresh water with a smattering of coins on the fountain's floor. It's a weird place to put a fountain near a library. Kind of perfect, though, too. That, that, oh, that ambiance. Water with uh, delicate scripts. That's, That's a good thing. They always say more moisture inside of libraries. Yeah, it's good, for, it's good for it. You don't want your paper drying out. <laughs> I'd like to check to see if there's anything of interest on these desks. Any, uh, like, books or letters? Make an investigation check. That's a nine. Yeah, you go through and nothing seems to really catch your eye. It's just pretty generic. Like I said, parchment, pens, various books. Nothing out of the ordinary. I want to look in the fountain. Yeah, you take a look in the fountain and, uh, you know, there's a a few coins on the bottom of the fountain. That's it? Just like regular money? Yeah, no exotic coins as far as you can tell. I toss a single copper in. Oh, yeah, you toss a copper in and you instantly feel hardier. Hardier? Yeah, like, I don't know, like you got a little pep in your step. Mm. Oh, okay. Magic fountain. Mm. Matid is is one to uh, try and experiment and th- tosses in two more. Oh, actually, uh, I'm looking at your character sheet right now, Matid. Uh, the exhaustion you're suffering from uh, is gone. Oh, well, congrats. That's good. I've totally been abiding by that the entire time. Totally forgot you were suffering from exhaustion. I'm sure I was supposed to do disadvantage on a few of those checks, but don't worry, I've been doing bad on rolls anyway, so I don't think <laughs> <it works. laughs> Okay, so it got me hearty with uh, the water. Man, I, I don't find nothing over here, do I? There's uh, some scrolls above me, right? Yeah, there's like a little cubby with various scrolls. Well, since I ain't got jack squat in these desks, can I go up there and just see if I see anything good? Yeah, we'll deal with that after we deal with Chip and Barney, because all that, this initial searching is all happening simultaneously. Uh, yeah. So while Okey-dokey. those two things are going on, uh, Chip and Barney, what are you guys doing? Okay, now, Barney, we're here yeah. on the bookshelves. Yeah. I'll look at the upper half, and you look at the bottom half, and we'll scan it together as you push me on this ladder down the row of books, and we're looking at, for the, the book of Evenfall. Okay, that sounds like a good plan. Now hold on. Can we look and push and look and push? Yeah, I guess both of you make investigation checks. Be careful on that ladder. <laughs> I like the mischievous nature. Got distracted. I rolled a five. I got distracted. I rolled a three. <laughs> this is going great. You didn't have any important clues in this room you needed us to see, right? It's <laughs> fine if we just blow through this room. <laughs> so you, uh, you know, you approach the stack of books and there's bookshelves and there's a plaque that reads fiction. Many of the books appear to be tattered or missing. So you both, you know, begin your search, but you're just having so much fun with the ladder, pushing oh. yourselves back and forth. <laughs> you're really not paying attention to anything in the stack. So nothing really stands out. You know, Barney, I, I've been so caught up trying to find Carol, the love of my life. I've, I've never asked you, have you ever, uh, you know, had a special someone in your life? I think I have, yes. You don't recall? You don't remember? It's hard to, sometimes to remember. Mysterious. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I'm right. right. trying to remember. I'm trying to remember. <laughs> I just, I was drinking something when you said that. You almost made me spit out everything on my keyboard. <laughs> uh, Joe, I have a, an important quest. It's just hard to remember what it was. Is there, is there anything I can do to jog that their memory? Or, you know, like, do you got any clues that we could follow? I, I want to help you out here, Barney. You're helping me find Carol. Yeah, I just know I'm supposed to save someone. Okay, well. Maybe even more than one. I don't know. All right, well, we're going to put a pin in that. I'm sure that's an adventure for a later day. I should probably get on that. I need to go. Oh. I got to go. Does Barry leave? Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, 
Where does Barney walk towards? I think he just walks, uh, looks for the exit. <laughs> okay, I mean, you would walk, you're still relatively close to it. You can walk back to that lobby area. You all kind of like walked into the lobby, then proceeded. So yeah, you walk back to the lobby and there's like, you know, a, a worn leather couch and a little dusty table with a book on it. I don't know if you want to take a seat or what Barney wants to do. Did we look at that book? Uh, no, I kind of also brushed past it because it was just where you all entered. But no, there is a, a book sitting on top of that table there. I swear there. to God, if it's the book of Everfall, even fall, I'm going to Can, can, can <laughs> I check scream. it? Yeah, make an investigation check. Two books were mentioned, right? Book of Evenfall, Book of Daybreak? Six! Book of Daybreak, yeah. We're looking for Evenfall. Yeah. You know, nothing seems exceptional about it. You take a look at the cover to see if this is the book you're looking for. And the cover reads Grapes of Wraith. <laughs> <laughs> nice. There's a, a bookmark in the middle of the book. Oh, can I go to where the bookmark is? Yeah, you go to where the bookmark is, and there's a slightly torn page. And the bookmark itself is a, a library card. Oh, and what's on it? Do you pull it out of the book, I assume, to like look yeah. at it and investigate it? So yeah, when you pull it out of the book to look at it, you flip it over, and on the back it reads, Beg, Borrow, But Never Steal. Beg, Borrow, But Never Steal. Does it have a name yeah. on it or anything? Or You turn it back over to look at the front, and it now has a picture of you and your name on the front. Oh, what? It says Barney Farney. Is this a magic book card? I've got a library book card. <laughs> you got overdue charges on that there? <laughs> Can I go back to Chip? Do you not want to see the ripped page or anything like oh, that? Oh, well, yeah. Was the ripped page stand out in any way? No, there was nothing particularly interesting about it. Most likely just wherever the previous person was reading and, you know, they stepped away. I like how they, instead of, they have a bookmark that they used to mark their place in the book, but they also rip the page out to mark where they were in the book. Yeah, there's nothing that stands out. Can I go back to Chip? Sure. I might need your help. Oh, you're back. Okay. On my quest. Okay. It's gonna be hard. I don't think I can do it by myself. Well, Barney, we've got your back, you know? I mean, we, 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 we've we been through a thick and thin, and we've got more adventures to come, so we, we're here for you, Barney. Thank you. What you got there? I found a library card. We, we check out a book. Now we don't have to steal it. Can I take a look at the library card? Yeah. What does it say? Does it still say Barney? Do you hand it to him, Barney? Yeah. You hand it over to Chip. Initially, you look at it, and it, you know, it's got a picture of Barney. It says Barney Farney. You read the back. It says beg, borrow, but never steal. Then when you flip it back to the front, it's got your picture, Chip, and it says Chip Haney. Barney, well, how did you get my library card here? It says Chip Haney. That's weird. It must be magic. A magic library <laughs> card. You know, Barney, you know what I think? All library cards are magic, <laughs> and everyone should get one. And I look into the camera of the audio <laughs> podcast listener's mind, and I say, you should go to the library. And, and then a rainbow books. appears over Chip's head and just says, knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. Pleasant trees, my pungent pals. Head on over to store.roosteeth.com. The grotesque party poster and t-shirt are available right now. We have more on the way. Blurble Gerbil mug and t-shirt dropping September 1st. Keep an eye out on those before they sell out. That's been happening a lot lately, so uh, keep your eyes peeled. September 1st. Support us over on roosterteeth.com by subscribing to First. Watching videos on our site supports us 10 times more than watching them on YouTube, even if you can't subscribe to First. Uh, you can help us out by watching things on roosterteeth.com. User experience there has improved significantly in the past year. Make sure you check it out. First is the best way to support our content and channel directly. We have a, a little bonus show coming up that's going to be a bit of a deeper dive with the players and DMs on uh, recent episodes. We're calling it Second Wind. Yeah, you, you heard that here first. You can check it out. Uh, on top of that, if you experience our content on Rooster Teeth, you also get no ads as well. So the whole thing just mashed together with no ad breaks on it. We are definitely listening to your feedback about stuff and creating more of what you love from first. Uh, support us now really helps us do that quite a bit. With the busy fall season just around the corner, you might be looking for wholesome, convenient meals for jam-packed days. Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit, can help you fuel up fast with chef-prepared, dietitian-approved ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door. You'll save time, eat well, and stay on track with your healthy lifestyle. Too busy with your end-of-summer goals to cook, but want to make sure you're eating well? With Factor, skip the extra trip to the grocery store, the chopping, the prepping, the cleaning up. You skip that too, while still getting the flavor and nutritional quality you need. Factor's fresh, never-frozen meals are ready in just two minutes. All you have to do is heat and enjoy. Get back to crushing your goals. You refresh your healthy habits without missing a beat. Choose from more than 34 weekly flavors, <laughs> weekly flavor-packed dietitian-approved meals, ready to eat in just two minutes. It's really such a vast selection. It's also good too. 
Level up with gourmet plus options prepared to perfection by chefs and ready to eat in record time. Treat yourself to upscale meals with premium ingredients like broccolini, leeks, truffle butter, and asparagus. Head over to factormeals.com slash dragon50. Use code dragon50 to get 50% off. That's code dragon50 at factormeals.com slash dragon50 to get 50% off. It's a great deal. I love Factor. Anytime I have it, I look forward to eating it, whether it's at home or even taking it to work and heating it up when I'm there, especially when I'm really busy, really helps out. Again, I mean, you've got to go check them out. Factormeals.com slash dragon50 with code dragon50 to get 50% off. Okay, I look again for another book. Any other books or anything else in this area besides books? Chris is asking if he can do an investigation check and this is again in the same place. Yeah, but I'm going to put a pause on that because now all of this would have happened while everything else is happening. We can go back to Elga at this point because Elga went first. What's Elga doing? (laughs) Good God, Elga's on top of the giant 20 (laughs) meter wide. (laughs) Elga wants to go look at that cubby with the scrolls. Okay, yeah, that's pretty close to where you are. On the side where Matid is? Yeah, I'll say Matid was heading up there too, so you both get there at about the same time. Both uh, Elga and Matid meet at this cubby. Did you see that giant sports thingy (laughs) in the corner? (laughs) Is it behind that giant art piece of brass? No, it is that thing. (laughs) Oh, okay. Is that that used in a sport in your life? It's very shiny. (laughs) You're a very funny little girl. (laughs) (laughs) Matid, make an intelligence check for me. Because you're talking to me. Dang, five. Yeah, that's definitely not a sports ball, but you're not. You, you, it's, it's, yeah, it's an, art, it's an art piece. Yeah, it's artistic. So you all meet here. And we're checking the scrolls. Yeah, you're in the corner and there's like wooden cubby holes containing pristine spell scrolls. Oh, spell scrolls. Yeah. Ooh, I grab one and open it up. Yeah, you grab one and open it up. You try to read it, I assume, like to yourself to understand what it is. Yeah, just internally. Make an arcana check. About to level up like Zelda style. You about to get a new magic power? Eleven. I don't have magic. Yeah, you're not a you're not a caster, right? Correct. It's all Arcana stuff. It's difficult to try to make out. It's good we got us two over here. Mati <laughs> turns to Elga. Do you understand what is on the scroll? Uh, let me take a look and see. You can make an Arcana check as well, Elga. Okay. Checking on the wrapping scroll. It's you also have a negative 11. one on our Arcana. <laughs> it's also an 11. Yeah, so combined 22, what do we know about <laughs> yeah. the scroll? Uh, yeah, it's just some kind of spellcasting script. Neither of you are casters. You've never really taken the time to look at archaic or arcanic uh, writings before, so it doesn't look familiar to you. I would say maybe if you keep trying, maybe if you keep looking at it, it might start to make sense to you. Mm. I'm going to keep looking at it harder. <laughs> it's like one of those magic eye posters. You have to like cross your eyes and like look beyond the paper. It's getting clearer, 13. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know why you couldn't read it. It's a scroll of blur. Blur? Oh, it's like blurry text. Oh. <laughs> it casts blur. <laughs> yeah, it's a, sc- it's a spell scroll that casts blur. <laughs> Silly. Oh. If we squint... And have like our eyes like a little unfocused. Can we tell what it says? From a metagaming perspective, blur is a spell that makes your body become blurred, like shifting and wavering to anyone who sees you. So anyone who's attacking you has disadvantage on attack rolls. And how do you like uh, initiate the spell? You could just use up scrolls. Yeah, you read it. Since you made a 13 hour check, I'll I'll say we're going to kind of homebrew scrolls a little bit to make them a little more accessible. In traditional D&D rules, they're kind of difficult to use and you have to be a spellcaster. We're going to modify that mechanic a little bit. Ooh. That allows you to just make an arcana check that's DC 10 plus spell level to be able to cast a scroll. Matt Mercer's listening to this right now and he throws his headphones off. <laughs> Sorry, Matt. I have a question about that. If you yeah. don't make the spell check, is the scroll like used and disappears? Like if it just like it's a one off that we failed yeah, on like it? or one is attempt? It, yeah. That is an excellent follow-up question. So Micah wrote a table of scroll mishaps. If you fail to check, things that could potentially go wrong by failing to make the check. I know I can't do this because it's going to use it, but could I just, like, use the scroll to test it and be like, whoa, Matisse, check me out. (laughs) It burns it up. You made the check. If you want to use it, I'll say you can use it. But, yeah, it does exhaust it. How many are in there? You see a bunch of different scrolls. Oh, so this one happens to be blur. 
this particular one happens to be blurry, yes. Matid goes and reaches for, like, another one or another two. These are gold. Yeah. Do you just, like, pocket them, or do you want to try to read them to yourself? Yeah, I, I want to open up the next one and read it. Uh, go ahead and roll an arcana check. That's a, that's a one. Ooh. Mm, this one's even harder to read than the other one. I just put it in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> All told, you know, now that you start pulling them out, I'd say there's eight scrolls in there. Ooh. Ooh. Can we get some of these scrolls? Well, one of which pretty. is blur. That, uh, uh, you're over there. You're over yeah. there. <laughs> the hoarding in this party. Unbelievable. <laughs> oh, oh, who started it? Not me. I shared. When we went to the store and someone was like, that weapon would be go, go great with me. I was like, go right ahead. Oh, no, I, meant, <laughs> I meant your money pilfering at the beginning of the campaign. You I don't you. know anything about that. <laughs> I loaned you money. <laughs> when did you loan me money? Uh, Jack needed cat food. Okay. Jacques. In my Get territory, it. we call him Jack. <laughs> For the, the, you said there's like eight total? Eight, yeah, there's eight. Okay, I hand Elga four and I give me four. And can we just know what we have now? Man. Sometimes we luck out depending on where we decide to go based off the room we are given. Yeah, I got a cat once. Matid, roll me, f uh, this is just to d divide them up. Roll me four D8. That would be the seven, eight, three, and four. Oh, perfect, no repeats. Yeah, you divvy up the scrolls and each of you take four. Cool. I'd say right around this time, as you all are finishing putting up this scrolls, I'm going to cut back to the book boys. What are you two doing? Hmm, let me see. Well, after having a heart-to-heart -heart about Barney's past and how he needs help on a secret mission, finding the magic library card. Yeah, and just a, a, a quick recap, you all are by the stacks to the east, just to the south of there's where you came in. That's where the lobby is, where Barney initially found that library card. To the southwest from there is the desks where Matid initially went. Straight west from you is the stairs going up to the next level. North of you is that big sphere. Look at the sphere. Just west of there to the northwest is the cubbies where Elga and Matid are currently standing. Do you want me to roll over to that big spear? Spear? <laughs> spear. Yeah, it looks like uh, it looks like Elga got a little distracted. There might be something there. Meanwhile, I might I might hop up to the second floor and see what they got up there. You know, maybe they got some sport books. I can learn a little bit about the coaching the youths. You know, the youths. <laughs> right, so I'll push. Yeah, push the cart to the sphere. Or is that wait? Was the spear? We haven't been to the sphere, right? Sphere. Sphere. Elga went to the sphere. Oh. The ladder you're on does not go all the way over there to oh. the sphere. The ladder you're on is just for the stacks of books that you're at. I'll join Barney over at the, the sphere. But Elga looked at the sphere? Elga looked at the sphere, but it seemed like it was very unresolved. So I think we should both okay. go look at the spear. All right, let's go look at the spear. Our <laughs> spear. <laughs> both of you make intelligence checks. Mm. Definitely the party strong suit. Party's got okay intelligence. I get advantage when I put my hand on my chin, right? Mm. <laughs> it's a 12. 18. Oh, our cleric doesn't even have a modifier of plus. Well, normally clerics are more wisdom, wisdom focused. Did we pick a party again that no one's intelligence based? <gasps> I all knew I was one? playing a barbarian. No, no, like we like we somehow like we totally like mixed up and we've got different things, but we still haven't got an intelligence rich party. Hey there, I got the Riz, all right? You you I can talk <laughs> to anybody anywhere and make friends no time. You're our top one because you have a plus one. Yeah, Chip has a twelve intelligence. He's the uh, he's the brainiac of the group. Uh, yeah, 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 I went to I went to Yamford. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. He Yam. is he is the only one who has a college degree. Yamford Community College. <laughs> At least I have an excuse. <laughs> <laughs> Both Chip and Barney, your roles were decent enough. You recognize that this is an actual globe. Okay. And the different rings seem to represent various stars and constellations, maybe. Okay. Can I, like, touch the rings? Is there, like, some sort of, like, Indiana Jones-like puzzle where you click this into that place and this there, and then it goes, and it reveals a gate? It does remember the, that poem says a gift lies in the stars oh yeah so maybe there's a gift there chip you reach out and touch you know one of the brass rings and they all begin spinning around and shiny starry constellation projections onto the walls after a moment they slow down and stop and onto the wall they project a sheath <gasps> oh, uh, uh, she They're said love. our love cannot be sheathed the rings begin to fold revealing a small gift box in the center of the globe there's a tag on it Oh, goody, goody, I go look at it. The tag reads, pour contents into fanny pack. Pour contents into fanny pack? Go to the table of contents. 
<laughs> Let's dump this in the fountain, quick! <laughs> I open the box and I pour the contents into my fanny pack. You open up the box and inside it appears to be, it looks like a great silvery sea swirling with sparkling stars. A sea? Like a water sea? Yeah, and it's okay. just like swirling with stars everywhere. You pour it into your fanny pack. This better not be a prank, Carol, if you're here <laughs> listening to this. Now the inside of your fanny pack appears to also just be illuminated, like looking into deep space and just see stars everywhere. So basically, anytime I open my fanny pack and look down, it just illuminates my face. <laughs> <laughs> looking at bright light. It's not like a bright light. It's just more like it's just like swirling stars. Cool. Can I like stick a hand in it? Can we like see if it changed like the, the the physics of it or like yeah you should totally put a part of your body in it barney you reach out and stick your hand in <laughs> oh, and it seems like the fanny pack is much deeper than it makes sense <gasps> is um, this like one of them their bags of holding yeah it has been transformed into a bum bag of holding oh. aka oh. the fanny pack of filling score <laughs> Elga, Elga, I'm sorry to yell in the library, but come here. I need to act like a kangaroo and you're my baby. <laughs> <laughs> Elga hops over. <laughs> I start hopping around and I say, look at me. I'm a mama kangaroo. <laughs> Matit is walking up the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> Bum bag of holding. Is that something I can find in inventory? It should be, yeah. This is just adorable. So we still need to find the book of Evenfall. They were in a fiction section, so I imagine we gotta go upstairs to where there's nonfiction. What was your thing, Barb? With the you had a, a page with constellations on it, right? There were charts, basically, yeah. And I took the rest of the pieces off the place it was. Because there were some pieces that were taken. It was a sky chart, gold of underglobula. That's all I know about it. I can hold up to five hundred pounds, although the bum bag will only weigh around five pounds in reality. Shall we go upstairs? I think Blaine's trying to find it in his inventory. Yeah, no, I found it. I'm just like looking through to see if there's any other like hints or anything like that. Basically, like uh, it has like a connection to the astral plane. It can fold 500 pounds. I can put things in there. Breathing creatures inside the bum bag can survive up to a number of minutes equal to 10 divided by the number of creatures, minimum one minute, after which they begin to suffocate. Oh boy. And placing the bum bag holding inside another extra dimensional space or similar magic item instantly disintegrates both items and opens a gate to the astral plane. So like, gotta be careful. This is kind of like a weapon of mass destruction here above my crotch. <laughs> Since he's sucked through it. Cool. Oh, gee, wait, Carol. Carol, my wife, I don't know if you can hear this, but that is a heck of a get. Thank you, honey. Happy Blurble Gerble Day. <laughs> Blurble Gerble. I'll wait to hear a response. <laughs> Well, if you guys want to, like, store stuff now, I mean, you know, you got 500 pounds. Give all your stuff to Chip. Yeah. Honestly, I can, you know, carry a lot of stuff in this here bum bag. It's good to know. Maybe you'll put Carol in there when you find her. Uh, oh, my Carol, I miss her so. And then you'll never lose her again. But she, can, for she can't minutes. be in there for long because <laughs> then she'll suffocate and that's not good. Okay, that's true. Does everybody want to try the second floor? Yes. Before we do, what kind of things did you guys get into? Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's nothing over here. I want to perceive if that's the case. <laughs> you can make an insight check. It's funny that Chip would be so just like not trustworthy of people. Every I time really <laughs> we go someplace, I buy drinks for the group. I am always the first to say, you guys buy this thing if you want it first. <laughs> Barney has incredible insight, but he's also very trusting in general. So. Trusting or gullible. <laughs> No, would you roll, Blaine? A 50. A 50? Wow. Divided, by, Divided 10. by 10. Yeah, Divided that's by a 5. <laughs> yeah, doesn't seem like Matit found anything. Mm. Barney has a plus 9 on insight. Really? What? Yeah, because of a that, that staff of candor. He already wow. had really high insight. Uh, Anyways, let's go upstairs. Yeah, everyone heads upstairs? Yeah, yeah why not? Yeah, all together, equally, as a party. Uh, Elga Trusting walks up friends. the stairs, clinking around with all the different scrolls in her pockets. <laughs> Just the sound of paper, wriggling against paper. <laughs> oh, did you check something out? <laughs> yeah, you Upstairs. gotta have a library card. Yeah, and so it's a spiral staircase circling a palm tree that leads to the second floor. What's the order y'all are walking in going up the staircase? Chip will go first because he's hoping that Carol is still somewhere around here. I'll go behind Chip. She's just playing hide and go seek. I'll let Elga go after uh, before me. Chip, Barney, Elga, Matid. Yep. All right, Chip and Barney make perception checks. 
killing me with these perception checks here. Oh, 18. I rolled a 12. Chip, as you're approaching the top of the stairs, you stop at the last second. You don't put your foot down because you realize on the floor, there's like scraps of bones spread across the floor. Mm. I motion for the group to stop and I turn back and I say, it's a boneyard up here. There's bones everywhere. Bones? <laughs> Does it look like a battle took place? It, like, is this a, tra a trap? Like, if we stepped on something and, and moved something, it would cause something to happen? It's just the kids' play area they have at the top of the library. Oh, <laughs> of course, of course. A little Lord of the Flies action. It's hard to tell. It just seems like, well, one, first of all, there shouldn't be scraps of bones laid here. Like, that's unusual. If you stepped on them, they definitely would snap and make noise, which, again, unusual for a library. Okay, gang, we're gonna have to play a classic game called The Floor is Lava, but instead of lava, it's bones. Is there like a door or any places of interest that yeah, was the lay of the room? Yeah, needed to navigate to. As you, you know, you turn back to talk to the party and you turn your attention back to look around the room. And as you do so, you see an obvious trail of innards and trails in blood leading from this area up to the north. All right, this Not is good. the adult nonfiction section. Uh, <laughs> Here in this area, to the north, it appears like there's some shelving and seating. To the east, once again, more stacks of uh, books. And then to the south appears to be an office of some sorts. And like a door to office or an office like is in the room? Like a door to an office. Kind of want to go for the office. Yeah, me too. I want to check the stack of books. Oh, we got, we got to do, do the split again? Team Carney. <laughs> I would have gone Charney, but yeah. It's yeah, that's, that's Mateen, probably better. Uh, where are you going? You said there was like entrails and something lead to some place up north, like another door. Shelves to the north. Shelves, shelves and seating. to the north and yeah, seating. Yeah, then stacks to the east. Yeah. I will join Elga in that direction. I think Elga, weren't you going east? I was going east to the book. Oh, the stacks of books, not yeah. the shelves of books. Correct. I'll go. I'll go. I'll go north to the shelves and the entrails. Okay. I'll kind of go clockwise around this time. We'll do Matid, Elga, and then Charney. I would advise trying to avoid crunching the bones, just in case it's a trap team. I fly and float. Mm, look at you. Elga's small, so I feel like she can navigate around these pretty easily. You do like little, uh, what's that little game you do when you're like jumping between squares? Hopscotch. 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 Hop bones. Okay, Matid, you take to the air and fly up to the north. Actually, I have to make this very clear. Matita actually doesn't have to ever walk. Part of actually my character is I'm floating all the time. I walk just because I'm, it's, I'm used to it. I actually don't have to touch the ground. Do you mean you're floating like as a ghost, but you yeah. walk because you're used to? Okay. Cool flex. But I, I would imagine this doesn't mean like I can float wherever. I imagine there's limitations, but I can fly. So I head over to the books. Sorry. You float up there to the north and what was once perhaps a section of shelves and seating has been overrun by decaying corpses and viscera. What? It's really disgusting. It's gross. So, like, does it look like a battle was had here or that these things were just, like, combusted in their seats? Make a... Let's call it a wisdom check. Twelve. Mediocre rolls Matisse. <laughs> At least it's out of the single digits. It looks like these bodies perished violently and there are, like, grubs crawling all throughout them, like they've been here a while. Ugh. So then there's them and then there's, like, a, a trail leading away from them. Leading up to this. Like, remember, you saw the blood and entrails oh. from when you first came up the stairs? It leads up to here. Okay. Do you want to see if, like, there's any, like, clothing or wrapping or something that would indicate who these people were? Yeah, I was going to ask, like, do these people resemble anything at this point? It looks like Karkasukans. Is there any sign of a weapon that did this? Well, like, is there a weapon around, you mean, on the ground well, with them? Yeah. And if there was any other way that I might discern, like, oh, that looks like a sword slash them or claw marks. I love the new season of CSI Matid. Yeah. <laughs> Make a, an investigation check. Matid loves this. Big fan of the Grey Ghost. Is that a Batman guy? That's a Batman guy. Eight. Nothing really stands out, but go ahead and make me a stealth check while you're here. Uh oh. Uh oh. Being careful. Nat 2025. Okay. You're silently moving about the space. Okay, so I'm in the north where all this, like, the shelves should be, but it's actually just a bunch of a big bloodbath. But that trail wasn't leading to, like, a, another room. This is, trail was leading to this. That, to these corpses that are decaying okay. here in this viscera. I'm at the edge of the room looking at all this stuff. Yeah. I don't think I could do anything else to do anything with this side of the room. I relinquish my, my minutes. Mm. Going around the room here, which means Elka is next. You walk over, on, you know, on the eastern wall are stacks and stacks of bookshelves covered in dust. There's a plaque that reads nonfiction. 
That's what we need. Could I look at the books that are there? Yeah, make an investigation check. She's looking Wait. for a book that says How to Advantage. Bat. <laughs> uh, let's say 15. Yeah, you uh, find a bunch of dusty book covers with half-eaten pages. Oh. What's with all the eaten pages? Is the mummy with us? Yes, but as you ask that question, a swarm of <laughs> dread moths, little tiny winged insects, begin flying out from the stacks surrounding you. Oh, God. Could I attempt to bat them away? Bat. Bat. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, they're, they're like everywhere. It's like a, a big swarm of dread moths. It's not just like one or two. It's like many, many insects. Could I attempt to use one of my scrolls? Sure, why not? Or should I save those? Do what you want. Do them. Oh, We're really I good at using up scrolls. our inventory items. What scrolls? What scrolls? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> you guys are not even close enough to me to hear me talk to myself. <laughs> <laughs> what is blight? It's a necromancy spell. It drains moisture and vitality from the target. The target makes a constitution saving throw and takes necrotic damage on a fail save. Do it. They're flying all around me though, right? Yes, but you can target them. Like in D&D, there is like a, a, an enemy type called swarms and this would be a okay. swarm, so yes. Should I try to target them with that? It's up to you. Yeah. All right, you pull out a scroll and try to read it. Make an arcana check. I'm excited. I'm very excited, Barbara. I'm very Four. excited. You rolled a four. Come on, girl. so close to rolling onto an 18, and it rolled onto a five, and then negative. What happens? Well, now I get to roll on the scroll mishap table. Dang it. I'm glad we get instant payoff for that. Yeah. (laughs) Barbara, you're doing a service. I just don't want to. You know, we have stuff. I want to use it. Roll me a D6. Will do four. Okay. Yeah, you pull out the scroll. You know, try to, as best as you can, put together the wards and, you know, point and try to channel the energy, but it doesn't happen. Instead, the energy shoots out from your hand and then circles back behind you, striking the unoccupied staircase that you all just walked up from. Oh, phew. Oh, sorry. I was, I, um, uh, anyways. That was some kind of new magic. That, I've never seen that magic come from you before. Did you learn a new spell? What happened? I don't know what happened. I'm young and confused. Oh. That's oh. okay. I'm old and confused. <laughs> <laughs> the swarm begins biting at you, Elga. Elga's like in initiative. Pretty much. They hit AC 17. Yeah, that hits. Ooh. What's the damage? They bite you for 10 points of piercing damage. These are nasty little moths. You can attack these with a battle axe, just letting you know. Yeah, I'm going to try to do that. I'm going to take my axe out and just like try to swing hit it around. With my axe. Swing it around. Yeah, just go ahead and make an attack roll. 25. Oh, believe it or not, that hits. <laughs> you wait, wait. What is these guys are each individually covered in like armor and, and, and <laughs> little helmets. Roll them all individually, all 1,000 of them. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you swarms hit, exist. You hit 300 of them. Should I do uh, the damage? Yeah, roll your normal damage. Ten. Yeah, you begin, you know, swiping at them with your battle axe. And you don't kill all of them, but, you know, you do manage to drop quite a few. The swarm is much, much thinned out at this point. And could I just keep looking to see if I find this book? Yeah, as you continue to look, they begin biting you again. They're not dead. You're still in, like, battle. Hitting AC 18. Yeah, that does hit. (laughs) Doing... Remember that time Elga died in the library? She got eaten by bugs. Five points of piercing damage. Matid, you begin to hear a commotion. Well, I have to say, actually, what it is is that Jacques is very interested in these bugs, oh. as all cats are. Jacques is distracted, actually, because Bye. as this commotion is happening, swarms of grubs begin writhing out from the corpses that are your, you are near and begin uh, converging on you, starting to attack you, Matid. I'm not touching the ground. What are these things doing? They're leaping into the air. <laughs> they, 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 like, stack on top of each other so that yeah. they can reach up. <laughs> oh, we figured out how to push Gus so far that he just makes up stuff so he can attack us. <laughs> it's, it's, a, a, a pyramid of grubs begins uh, approaching you. I fly higher. <laughs> oh. Not before they attempt to bite you. Hitting AC 13. No. Uh, I attack back. Okay. They cast bird poop. (laughs) Oh, no. They're falling from the ceiling, too. They're everywhere. (gasps) Dang. This place is nasty. Real Temple of Doom situation happening. I love that movie. (laughs) Okay. Can I do flurry of blows? Sure. I can make up to three unarmed strikes. I am bothered because I feel like the book could be in this stack, but these moths won't let me look. Yeah, you got to kill the moths, and then you can have some book time. We'll get back to you after Matisse takes their action here, Barbara. That's a 12. Does that land? Yes. 
I guess I'll, I'll resolve one at a time. 12, yeah. I'll attack. I did seven. Yeah, you begin punching the grubs. Ew. <laughs> Actually, that's not too bad for me. Grubs are, are nom noms. Oh. Uh, the second one was a 16. I rolled it ahead. That hits? Seven. Yeah. The, uh, you're, you're still squishing them. There's, still, there's way fewer of them, but they're still they're still writhing around. At 20, 25. Yeah, that hits. So uh, go ahead and roll, roll that damage. 10. 10. So that's 24 points of damage. Do you use your talons or your arms? I use arms talons when I do that. Yeah, I like talons. You begin slashing at the grubs with your talons and you rip them all to pieces till none are left moving. I'm very happy with that. <laughs> Elga, you still have some dread moths kind of all around you. I'm going to rage. I was going to say, this actually feels like, canonically, this is when Elga would get so angry, Elga yeah. would rage. Did you know that I ate one of your brothers earlier today when we walked to this library? <laughs> I'll do the same to you. Oh, they're raging now too. Impossible. <laughs> <laughs> Barbarian moths. Barbarian moths. <laughs> <laughs> Could I use my axe of the scarab this time? Yes. I rolled a two plus eight and it's a tan. You don't have anything you can add to that? You're real close. You're real close. Anything to plus that up? Perhaps a scroll. <laughs> I don't have any inspiration die. So that's it. It's a plus two to damage though with when I'm raging, but not to my yeah, roll. Yeah, the attack itself. Mm -hmm. Gosh, mm. dang it. A rare instance that you miss. You have to roll a two. I know. Well, I guess I miss. <laughs> what happens, Gus? If you reckless attacked, you would have advantage on it. Normally, you have to call it before the attack, but if you wanted to retroactively call it here just to see if it hits, I'd allow it. Could I recklessly attack with my axe of the scarab? We're all about learning yeah. new characters and learning new ways of playing here at Sneaky Dragon D&D &D Academy. Never done a reckless attack, so it's new to me. Yeah, all that means is you attack with advantage, but then when you get attacked, they have advantage attacking you. Gotcha. You are letting down your guard to get a buff on hitting things. Yes. Yeah. So just roll the attack again. Anything above a two. Thank goodness. 18. Okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> your, uh, your axe of the scarab finds a bunch of moths. How much damage does it do? All of... Dang it! <laughs> it's okay, plus your rage. I rolled a one plus six, so it's seven, and then my rage would be plus two, so nine. That actually is enough. That is exactly what you needed to deal with the moths. The, uh, the remaining moths fall to dust and fall apart at the hands of your mighty axe of the scarab. Stupid bugs. <laughs> Matid turns around and just sees Elga just heaving, just eh, 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 just full <laughs> feral mode. Little tiny wings everywhere on the ground. Yeah. <laughs> Crunching on a moth. You are now my mortal enemy. <laughs> I will remember you for this day. Could I continue to look at this book? Find book that stack? book. Yeah, there's uh, you know, quite a few books. So you begin, you know, you look through them, taking your time to make sure you don't miss it. But you do not find a book with that title here. Mm. But the three more swarms book. of dead moths appear. <laughs> <laughs> Limited so, print. Can I see if there's anything else worth noting or that I want to take within the stack? Make an um, investigation check finds a biography of Dracula. With advantage, 12. No, nothing stands out. It's all egghead book stuff. Nerds. And then could Elga take all the dead moths and like put them in a pile and then put all the books on top of them? <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. And stay down. Is there a dumb reference section in this stupid library we should be in? <laughs> Not that you've seen so far. Okay, so that leaves Charney, correct? And you all went south towards the office? Yeah. Yep. Gonna check out right. this office. Just to kind of re-wrangle everyone, we'll say everyone reconvenes here at the office if that's okay with you. And begins heading in that direction. It was taking a really long time for Chip to help Barney through the bones. <laughs> <laughs> I looked back and saw you guys fighting against tiny things, and I was like, "What the heck is going on over there? Some sort of karmic retribution, I suppose." <laughs> From your perspective, it looks like they're attacking nothing. They're just swinging wildly at the air, oh, uh, attacking like foes that you can't see. They must be training. <laughs> Good for them. So proud. As you approach the doorway, you hear the crumpling of paper and you notice the door is cracked. Before you peek inside, a waft of dust fills your noses and beak. Everyone make a constitution saving throw. Uh-oh. I really appreciate how inclusive you are with that kind of speech. 10, 15, 7, 25. I think Elgin made it. <laughs> with a nat 20. <laughs> yeah, I would hope so. <laughs> that was funny. Elga and Chip, you feel a tickle in your nose, but you're able to stifle it. However, Matid and Barney, you can't help but release a thunderous sneeze. Uh, 
Both of you fall into the door, slamming it into the wall and tumbling into the room. It appears to be an office completely coated in a peculiar dust. In the center of the room is a disheveled desk with an office chair that quickly settles around. Oh no! An immense insectoid with wings stands tall from the chair, its mandibles fervishly chewing, your eyes disbelieving what they see. A massive Mothman is devouring the pages of a tome entitled Book of Evenfall. Oh no! <gasps> Find out what happens on the next episode of Tales from the Stinky Dragon. Oh, man. We're going to fight Big Bug. Did he listen to me when I yelled stop? We're going to find out if he stops. <laughs> you, do you speak moth? You know, I think right now the patriarchy is alive and well. Elka's going to go take a breather outside of this room. You guys handle the Big Bug. <laughs> This episode of Tales from the Stinky Dragon was produced by Ben Ernst, written, edited, and composed by Micah Reisinger, with additional editing work by David Sanye. This week's arrow question was submitted by at Brada Kalani on Discord. Here's a quick shout out to folks that interacted with us on social media recently. Here's some NPCs named after them in this episode. Ryder Rajad, aka The Mummy, named after user Rida7S on Reddit. Chief Inspector Weezer, named after user Carl Weezer 567 on Reddit. And of course, want to give some special thanks to friends who provided voiceover for characters in this episode. Ryder Rajad, a.k.a. The Mummy, voiced by Hannah McCarthy, at hi hello underscore Hannah. Chief Inspector Weezer, voiced by Micah Reisinger, at Micah Reisinger. Tune in next time for another thrilling episode of Tales from the Stinky Dragon. You know what I think? All magic cards are library, and everyone should get one. You try yeah. All magic cards are library? Yeah, you want to try that again? You wanna, all right, take two and action. All library cards are magic. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>